It's that time again. This is Katni with your weekly Python on Hardware News. Every week, we put together the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. It is available through adafruitdaily.com. Head over to sign up and see all of the past and current newsletters, or tune in each week to hear what's going on. This week, Adafruit joined the Stop Hate for Profit campaign by pulling ads from Facebook and Instagram, joining large companies like North Face, Patagonia, and REI. Facebook specifically has ignored the request from users, companies, and social justice groups to take meaningful action. They now have a chance to listen and make changes. Adafruit is supporting the efforts with the Anti-Defamation League, Color of Change, Common Sense Media, Free Press, the NAACP, and Sleeping Giants. Visit the Adafruit blog for details and resources. Adafruit is working with the team to open safely as New York City continues to lift COVID-19 restrictions. We continue to follow the same safety protocols we have since the beginning and will continue to do so. At this time, regular non-COVID related orders are shipping, but expect delays as we ramp up. We are working hard to get more items in stock, so if there's an item out of stock that you're looking to purchase, sign up to be notified when it's back in stock. For more information, visit adafruit.com slash open safely. With active development of Bluetooth capabilities in CircuitPython, here's a spotlight on some of the recent community work. iBeacons are BLE devices used in location awareness applications, such as welcoming people as they arrive at an event, or broadcasting information to compatible devices at a nearby museum exhibit. The term iBeacon is Apple's implementation of the technology, and reportedly is what they use at their stores to send notifications to iPhone users as they enter or leave the store. Another great application of iBeacons is general automation using iOS apps such as Shortcuts and Pushcut. Some examples are turning the lights on when you enter the office or running a HomeKit scene when you leave the house. From Moving Electron's blog, iBeacons can be bought online, and the purpose of this short post is to reuse a BLE-capable small microcontroller running CircuitPython as an iBeacon. In my case, I'll be using a particle xenon device, but the Adafruit Itsy Bitsy NRF52840 Express or an Adafruit Feather NRF52840 Express microcontroller will work just fine. Read more at movingelectrons.net. Learn about controlling a LEGO WeDo 2.0 wireless motor with Bluetooth and Python in a tutorial from ev3dev.org. Video available on YouTube. Anderson Lizardo posts to GitHub HCIURTEMU a very simple emulator of Bluetooth HCI UART transport. It can be used to emulate a Bluetooth device using QEMU, configured to redirect serial to TCP and HCI attach. HCI traffic is saved to a file. Maker Melissa has been working on a large multi-panel LED matrix sign for her lab. Melissa writes, the LED matrix sign is a project I have been wanting to work on for the last 30 years. I saw that the Project MC2 pink pixel purses were very inexpensive on Amazon, so I ordered six and disassembled them. Other hardware includes an Adafruit RGB matrix bonnet and the Raspberry Pi 3B+. One goal was to run this project with Python because I wanted to easily be able to script out messages or a series of messages. I was pleasantly surprised to find the Henner Zeller RGB matrix library. Recently working on developing the Display I.O. library for Adafruit Blinka, which runs on Raspberry Pi and is built on top of the Pillow library, motivated me to focus on the sign project. Melissa designed and printed a modular 3D printed enclosure for the panels. She has written a standalone library that works for the project and plans on releasing it on GitHub for others to use. For more details, check out Maker Melissa on Twitter. In this week's CircuitPython deep dive livestream, Scott streamed further work on the ESP32 SPI and memory. Check out the latest video and past videos at adafru.it slash deep dive. Become a sponsor to MicroPython on GitHub. Funds will go towards continued maintenance of the software, recruiting additional maintainers, and offering bounties for finding and fixing critical bugs. For more information, visit github.com slash sponsors slash MicroPython. Python is the third most beloved developer language in a 2020 survey. In the 2020 Stack Overflow Developer Survey, Python slips to third place in the Beloved Languages category behind Rust and nearly a tie with TypeScript. For details, visit stackoverflow.blog. The Hello Blink Show podcast released Leading a Developer Community with Katni Rembor. In this episode of The Hello Blink Show, Harris and Sean interview firmware developer, hardware designer, technical writer, and community leader Katni Rembor. I share my insights into how I engage followers and educate my peers. Listeners will hear my advice as I delve into my experience with Adafruit and the process involved with fostering a community on learning circuit Python. Check it out at helloblinkshow.com 14. The Adafruit Discord server is three years old. It was set up on June 21st, 2017. 
Discord has turned out to be a wonderful place for the community, including folks interested in CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython. Join at adafru.it slash discord. A post on dev.to walks through using CircuitPython to play Grand Theft Auto San Andreas Chaos by inserting a random cheat code into the game via keyboard emulation on an Adafruit Circuit Playground Express. Cedar Grove posts to Twitter a workshop clock in a micro pelican case. It uses an Adafruit Feather M4, RTC Featherwing, level converter, and display. It has a custom Oshpark motherboard. Functionality provided by CircuitPython. The 2020 Python Software Foundation Board of Directors election recently concluded. The top four are Nina Zakarenko, Dustin Ingram, Jeff Triplett, and Thomas Wooters. Each will serve a three-year term on the Foundation Board. More details available on the PSF blog. Caitlin's dad continues to make inspired art with NeoPixels controlled by CircuitPython, including a light-up obelisk and a word clock. For this and more, check out Caitlin's dad on Twitter. Read about using the ESP32 Wi-Fi Manager and MDNS in MicroPython on sdoherty.com. Build a kid's eye safe smart TV with ESP32 and MicroPython in this post on srccodes.com. Font Edit Font Editor targets embedded systems with LED, LCD, or e-paper displays. Allows exporting developed fonts to an array compatible with C, C++, Arduino, or MicroPython and Python. Details on cnx-software.com. Code samples for the book Effective Python, 59 Specific Ways to Write Better Python by Brett Slatkin are available on GitHub along with an outline to learn better Python practices. You can also get the book from major booksellers. Structuring a Python Application, a video reference guide course to common Python application layouts and project structures for command line applications, web applications, and more, available from Real Python. This week on Python T with Nina Zakarenko, Carol Willing and Nina discuss empowering others with Python. Art by Kat Robbins for the University of Bath Visions of Science competition. This work showcases an Adafruit Circuit Playground Express and the university logo. Check out details at mfc underscore cat on Twitter. The number of CircuitPython-supported microcontrollers and single-board computers grows every week. There were no new boards added this week in addition to the six added last week. Are you interested in adding a new board to CircuitPython? Check out the Adafruit Learn system for a series of guides about getting your board added to CircuitPython and CircuitPython.org. There are five new Python on hardware-related guides in the Adafruit Learn system this week, including Build a Circuit Playground Bluefruit automatic bike brake light with a custom 3D printed bracket that automatically turns on when it senses that the bike is braking, in this guide from Dylan Harada. Build an RGB matrix slot machine featuring fruit and Circuit Playground characters, MP3 sounds, and a 3D printed print-in-place spring-loaded handle powered by the Adafruit Feather and the RGB matrix Featherwing, all running Circuit Python, in this guide from Noah and Pedro. The current number of Circuit Python libraries is 260. This includes both the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries and the CircuitPython community libraries. There are no new libraries this week, but there are a number of updated libraries. As always, visit circuitpython.org libraries to download the latest Adafruit CircuitPython bundle. Included in this week's updates from the CircuitPython team. Now that the first version of the Adafruit Blinka BLEIO library is essentially finished, Dan's next BLE quest is to re-implement underscore BLEIO again, this time using the ESP32 HCI interface as the low level. The ESP32 is what we use for Wi-Fi on our airlift boards, but it also supports Bluetooth HCI, a serial protocol that is pretty standard among Bluetooth adapters. Most Bluetooth USB dongles implement it, for instance. So once Dan has it working on ESP32, it should also be usable for other adapters that implement HCI. Lucian worked on fixing an I2C timing issue in the F7 and H7 boards, RGB matrix testing, adding the IMX1050 EVK board, and a variety of other minor bugs and annoyances. As always, he's trying to learn new things about bugs as they're resolved so he can avoid issues in the future or fix deeper structural issues that could cause more instability later on. Melissa finished working on some more of Display I.O. for Blinka. One of the displays she found particularly challenging was the SSD1331, despite the fact that she originally added the code to CircuitPython to get it working. The reason was that despite it wanting to accept all data as commands, sometimes it wanted commands sent as data, which she found kind of weird. Using a combination of hooking up a logic probe to compare the Adafruit CircuitPython RGB display library and carefully comparing CircuitPython, Blinka Display I.O., and the RGB display library, she was able to figure it out. 
She also wrote a script for the Raspberry Pi, though it could really run on any board that supports Blinka and I2C, that will step through calibrating a 9 off sensor using the command line. She's currently working on writing up a guide page and using this script, which will be one of the easiest ways to calibrate the sensor. FlaskCon is a community-driven Flask event being held July 4th and 5th. Flask is a micro-web framework written in Python. Call for Papers is currently open. Visit flaskcon.com for more information. EuroPython 2020 this year will be an online conference from July 23rd to 26th. Attending the conference days will require a ticket and participating in the sprints will be free. Check out ep2020.europython.eu for details. PyCon AU has announced that they're holding PyCon Line AU in August. Check out 2020.pycon.org.au for more information. PyCon India 2020 will be held online from October 3rd through 5th, 2020. A call for proposals is now open through the 14th of August. Visit in.pycon.org 2020 for details regarding the CFP and the conference. Translating CircuitPython is now easier than ever. Translations make the project more accessible to a broader range of folks. Adding or improving translations is a great way to get started contributing to the project. With the help of fellow open source project Weblate, we're making it even easier. You can create a new account just for Weblate, or sign in using other sites like GitHub, Google, or Facebook. If you write another language, visit adafru.it slash translate cp, sign in, and start translating. Looking for more Python on hardware all week? Join the Adafruit community on Discord and check out the help with CircuitPython and CircuitPython channels. We're over 21,000 strong and continuing to grow. You'll find a supportive, positive community filled with like-minded folks. Join at adafru.it slash discord. And that is your Python on hardware news for this week. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe to the newsletter or tune in again next week.